Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Today in this video we are going to see top 10 tips to get into India's top labs. So if you are an aspiring research scientist, if you want to uh, build your career in research and you want to get into the India's top labs to start off with your research career then this video is definitely for you because today we're going to discuss about top tips that you can help you to get into India's top labs. I'm Dr. Vaishali, academic specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we guide you in anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come let's explore the topic. So let's start with our first tip, right? So the first one is about graduation, right? So to enter any lab as a uh, as a first step, you need to graduate in the field, right? The graduation can be UG or uh, PG. So after your MSc or MTech as well, you can get into the, uh, you know, India's uh, uh, you know, top labs for your research career or even after finishing UG, that is your BTEC, a four-year UG program as well, because according to the new notification from the UGC, even after you finish your BTEC, you can join for a PhD program. So yes, even after finishing UG, you can get into India's labs to start off with your research career. Second is it has to be in the relevant field because according to the notification of most of these universities, it's important that you do the graduation in that particular field. For example, if you want to uh, get into a PhD in life sciences, then you should have finished your UG or PG in life sciences, any field of life science, whether it could be biotechnology, microbiology, marine biotechnology, etc. So in that will not matter as long as it is in the same broader perspective sense right so that's what is important the first tip that you need to know that is you should have fin finished your graduation and not just graduation it's important that you finish the graduation with the qualifying mark as well because many of these universities they have a qualifying mark or the eligibility that is there in uh, most of these universities and you have to uh, make sure that you are above this eligibility level so um, in, on a general note, the minimum uh, percentage, the pass percentage marks that has to be there is 50 to 55 percent and there can be a relaxation for uh, or the reservation for SEST or OBC, PWDs as well. So according to the notification of these universities, you can, uh, you know, the qualifying mark and the eligibility will also differ. So if it is not, if your graduation does not give the marks in the percentage then or uh, the marks itself then it could be GPA so it has to be equivalent of GPA as well right so this is with respect to the qualifying marks third is with respect to the entrance examinations so to get into a PhD or a JRF position in a most of the government institutions or government research centers as well as few of the private uh, research institutes, you need to pass any of these entrance examinations. So what are these entrance examinations? They can be CSIR net, that is CSIR UGC net, GATE. ICMR JRF, DBT JRF. So these are just few of the entrance examinations that I've listed here. So there are also many more and uh, you know a few universities have uh, different uh, eligibility or the entrance examinations that they consider. So it depends from university to university but these are a few of the examinations that most of the universities consider to if you want to join as a PhD or as a, or as a JRF right. So uh, many of the uh, government universities have these entrance examinations as a mandate and few of the private universities also have this as a mandate but uh, in the private institutes that do not have a mandatory entrance examination um, they prefer such candidates so that's also good if you've given any of these uh, government entrance examinations. Fourth is the university entrance examination. So few of the uh, private institutions um, also have their own uh, way of, uh, you know, 
qualifying or selecting the candidates through their own exam so this examination it could be in the form of uh, mcq or a written examination it could be subjective as well or it can also be uh, interview or group discussion etc so it could be any of these in these private institutions apart from the private universities a few of government universities also uh, have their own entrance examinations apart from what is uh, there what is conducted by the government right we saw csir net as one of the examination to enter phd in the government institutes but few of the government institutes along with the csir net examination even if you qualify csir net examination you should give their entrance exam as well as a next step to consider uh, to get into phd right so this is with respect to the university entrance examinations after that it's about project the, the fifth point or the fifth step to enter any uh, india stop labs is as a project assistant so if you don't want to enroll into a phd as such but you want to start off with your research career then one option for you is to go for project assistantship like a jrf or an srf and it should be a funded project so many of the funded projects that's there uh, uh, with the professors in the universities they look for jrfs or srfs so from outside as well so even if you don't want to enroll into a phd program itself you can join as an srf or a jrf and then you can uh, do that project one you can you will get experience out of that particular research and two if you are interested you can convert it into a phd program as well so that's another way of entering into these uh, top labs especially if you want to enter into india's top labs then this is one way as well the sixth point that i have for all of you is about networking right so why is networking important so one reason why networking is important is because you will get to know about the opportunities that is there because Uh, especially when it comes to these uh, project assistantship or uh, you know these funded projects that the professors have and they are looking for candidates to join their team so these uh, news you'll get only through networking only when you have people in in the lab itself yes you will get to know about these opportunities and two they can also help in um, you know giving a reference for you right because uh, these project assistantship will be uh, interviewed directly by these professors itself so it is upon their uh, you know uh, it, it's in their hands to cho- choose you so if you have a good reference uh, at this point of time uh, with your network and everything then it's an added advantage for you so the sixth point is about networking so make sure that you have meaningful connections with the you know people that you already know in your field and make newer connections as well while you're studying itself or when you or if you've completed your studies as well just make sure that you have a good network a reliable network around you so that was the sixth point that i had for you the seventh point that i have is the projects in graduation that is when you are graduating itself if there are any uh, if you have any opportunity to do projects or to get hands on experience in any of the tools or techniques that is going on in a university then that's a very good advantage that you will have because one you will get the experience of a research you will have the flavor of research and two it's also going to good uh, look very good in your cv and in your interview etc so especially even if you qualify these entrance examinations once you go to interview and they know that you you already have some research experience then it's an added advantage to you right so yes uh, make sure that you take these projects or these assignments seriously and then uh, you know perform it as well you can go for publication also so if your uh, guide is willing to go for a publication then that's a very good thing as well so make sure that you are an active participant during your college days right in um, the academic activities right so that is with respect to uh, projects that you can do during your graduation the eighth tip that i had for you is have a strong cv because as we discussed earlier as well this will help in your interview and in getting yourself shortlisted right 
you can have build a strong cv by attending internships or workshops or even getting certificate courses in the area of your interest so uh, whichever area that you want to pursue your research in make sure that you have um, you know you attend a few internships you have a few certificate courses that you've finished or uh, alternatively you can also have work experience right so if, you, if it's a smaller work experience also it's all right but if it's a research or a work experience as well it is an added advantage especially in, a, in your interview so if you're looking for any internship certificate courses biotechnica is there for you to help you with this do check out the link below in the description box there are various internships workshops and certificate courses that will come handy for you and that will give you a real uh, exposure to these fields right so check out the description link below the ninth tip that I have for you is about the interview preparation itself, right? Because, um, you know, if you have that experience in research, right, it's going to help in the interview uh, interview as well. Because we talked earlier as well that if you have finished, uh, if you have any experience, uh, hands-on experience in any projects or any of the assignments, then yes, uh, it could be a good uh, start-off point in your interview. And secondly, have the confidence uh, during your interview, right? Because... Uh, believe in yourself and have that confidence because without confidence if you go there and you start uh, answering the questions then you know whatever answers that you would have normally known will also not come out of your mouth so have that confidence and believe in yourself before you enter the the interview hall right research also about the projects that's currently going on so whichever university that you are giving the interview with make sure that you you run through their profiles you run through the profiles of the faculties uh, about what research they're currently going on uh, you know how uh, interested are you in those how are you connected with uh, you know those research that's going on so just go through all of them because even in the interview if they ask you about you know what field that you're interested in then you can put forth that this particular research that's going on in this lab in your university that's what i'll be interested in so you know putting out such uh, strong uh, uh, you know uh, uh, strong points will let them know that you know how interested you are like you are good at researching about these things so that will give an added advantage again the 10th and the last point that i had for you is keep a lookout for the official notifications that's given from these uh, universities because every university calls for, for their PhD at different intervals of time. So PhD or even JRF or SRF position or a project assistant position as well. So whether it's a JRF or project assistant or PhD, so all of these official notification will be uh, at different time intervals in different universities. So Biotechnica is a one-stop solution for you in that sense. So do subscribe subscribe for Biotechnica and uh, do not miss on uh, miss out on these official notifications that comes from the universities right so these are the 10 different tips that i had for you if you are somebody who wants to enter india's top lab as a research career option right i'm sure it was super helpful for everybody out there thank you so much and see you all until next video